Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video. I hope all of you are doing well today. This is your review for France 2, Morocco 0 in the semi-final of the 2022 World Cup, the second semi-final. Personally, this one has stung a bit, I'm not going to lie, I've just finished watching and I'm, I'm gutted, I'm gutted. For Morocco, I'm gutted. Congratulations to France. Clinical, clinical, we're not the best team on the night. But clinical. And Morocco, uh, there's there's things that I will have to say. And there's good things that I have to say too. But we'll get to that. Before we do, I want to let you know about today's sponsor. Check this out. Let me tell you about the sponsor of today's video, freecash.com. They are currently hosting their biggest event ever, a $500,000 World Cup event where everyone can win a share of a $500,000 prize pool by predicting the World Cup winner. Just sign up, then unlock the event with my code YTF, then go to the match day section and submit your predictions for a winner in each game and match day. You can check how well you predicted recent games in the leaderboard and win up to $1,000 every single day for free. On freecash.com, you can earn money by completing a lot of different tasks such as downloading apps, playing games, taking surveys or watching videos and many other ways. Just sign up, go to the earn page and check the featured offers at the top. They usually pay the best and are the easiest to complete. It's that easy to earn on freecash.com. Make sure you'll check it out. Link in the description. Hit that now and enjoy. Let's get on with the rest of the video. Right, let's get cracking. France 2, Morocco 0. Now, oh, man, I'm gutted for Morocco. I really am. But I have to say, from the get-go, let's be honest, right? No one expected Morocco to get this far. So off the bat, I want to say to all the Moroccans watching, firstly, unlucky. Secondly, look, you're already winners. You've created history. You're the first African team to reach a semi-final of the World Cup. The semi-final. No one, even if they had to pick an African team, would have picked Morocco to reach the semi-final. Except for Samuel Eto'o with his coconut predictions where somehow he got France-Morocco right and the other one he put, I think he put Senegal versus Cameroon. <laughs> My man was just waiting for Africa. But anyway, Morocco, you've done yourselves proud, honestly. As Mourinho used to say, you can leave with your head held high. But not leave just yet. There is still one game to play and that's for third place. Tonight, honestly, Morocco, and let's be real, were the better team, right? It's different to how I saw England play against France. Because for the first half, I have to say England, I was saying... They, they they should have done better in that first half. But the second half, they came alive. The Moroccans tonight switched on after going a goal, a goal down. After they went a goal down very early, with time, all of a sudden, Morocco started taking the initiative. You could see that tactically, this was a very, very interesting game. Why? Because they play similar. <laughs> You know, I said in the preview that tactically this was going to be a really, really interesting game and a hard game to read. It's a very hard game to predict. Why? Because the styles are similar. France are a team that like to allow the opposition to have the ball, right? But they've got opportunists and they've got moments where they like to strike and they use their speed and they use their talent and they use their prowess. They've got the speed on the wings. They've got talent down the middle. They've got Mbappe and his quality. They've got all sorts of Giroud and his finishing. And it's just, it's when they hit you with a counter-attack, you better start praying. Morocco, though, defensively are so solid. And I said this, but after the fourth minute, they let themselves down in terms of the positioning because and I to be honest I have to say the first goal for the French was unfortunate for Morocco it was Saiz I think I think it was Saiz who allowed that pass to go through um, on the right hand side for France on the left hand side for Morocco and you could see his hamstring his leg was wrapped in bandage and he'd done that the last game and he got taken off and he managed to make a recovery for this one and he still played with the bandage you could see that he just did not stretch far enough to reach the ball when if he was fully fit, I think he would have probably made it. It allowed the space in behind 
and France to get completely on the attack and an opportunity to get created, even though that was stopped. But the rebound that came later and the ball that went to Hernandez, the goalkeeper, Yassine Bounou, he hesitated. And I don't know why he hesitated because he was running to Hernandez and then it's like he paused. And then it's like he went forward again. And in that split second, you allowed Hernandez to have the time to put his leg up and hit. Whereas I believe if Bunu had kept going and closed the space down and make himself big, he probably would have blocked the shot even if it was with his chest. I felt like Bunu could have done better there. The defender that was on the, f on, on the near post probably could have done better because he wasn't on his post. He allowed the space. It's unfortunate. Those are things that happen in a split second. But I believe Bunu hesitated and if he didn't I think he would have made himself big enough to block the shot you go one nil down now for Morocco that changes everything because Morocco are used to setting up to defend and try and keep the game shut down frustrate the opponent and then strike later with a counter attack and Morocco are not able to do that one nil down after five minutes and they have to chase the game now this suits France because France as I said, they like to allow you to have the ball. Here you go, have the ball. No problem. But we are going to strike. You give us one opportunity, we will strike. I thought France would have more opportunities. And they didn't. The whole game, they had two shots on target. Ironically, two goals. That's it. They had about 14, I think, off target. Some of them were wild. Some of them were not even classified as shots, if we're being honest. The, the clear-cut opportunities, the goalkeeper from Morocco didn't have to do too much. But he had two times to show up and twice France scored. You know? And that was what stung. Because overall, Morocco, the game plan, the game plan changed. They had to take the ball. They had to start moving. They had to create. They had to start dominating the game. And for 75 minutes of that game, they absolutely did dominate France. They were moving the ball beautifully. Amrabat today. Despite some of the misplaced passes later. What a player. I have to I have to say this and I will say this after this World Cup is done and I start talking about Chelsea and club football again and start giving my thoughts on on what clubs should do and what clubs are doing and what Chelsea should be doing I am going to advocate for us to go and get Amrabat I am absolutely going to do my absolute hardest right absolutely <laughs> because we got Kante leaving I think at the end of the season to have Amrabat come in as a six you could not ask for more. You cannot ask for more. The guy is a machine. The guy is beautiful in terms of his awareness, in terms of his reaction, in terms of what he's what he knows he's going to do on the ball, the way he's able to pivot, the way he's able to drive. The way he, beautiful, beautiful. He had a fantastic game. And every time he would take the ball forward, he'd find a pocket of space. He would exploit it. And then, boom, Morocco have an opportunity to attack. And each time... On that right-hand side, Ziyech, Hakimi, the combinations, beautiful. Buffal coming central, beautiful. It's just the finish. Morocco let themselves down with the finish, but it wasn't just, ah, oh, you know, oh, he, just, he just couldn't shoot or he just couldn't finish. It, it was the one thing that let Morocco down tonight that France had absolutely spot on. The French had what the point I'm about to make, the French had spot on. And it's the most important when you're looking to finish. Positioning. The French, for the positioning, the chances that they get, the very few, positioning is absolutely on the money. It's exactly where it needs to be. The proof, look at the second goal. When uh, Kolo Mouani comes on. Literally, 30 seconds. And all it takes is a drive down the left-hand side, Mbappe to pick up the ball, get in between defenders, hits it, positioning Kolo Mwani is right there right there exactly where the ball is going to be and that is something that Morocco struggled with throughout the game every single opportunity that comes into the box is in the box and you're thinking who's he going to give it to what's he going to do positioning is wrong Ball comes low drive, there's no one going forward. If there's someone going forward, the ball gets played backwards. If there's someone on the edge of the box, there's only one man in the box. If there's someone that's uh, looking to, to combine and then gets into the box, there's no one to combine with. The positioning for Morocco in that final third, not even the final third, in the box, it was the in the 18-yard, was wrong. And now 
there's two options here. Was that down to the manager or was that down to fatigue? Because as I said yesterday, the Moroccans were going to find this really difficult. Really difficult. The proof is in the pudding. Size had to come off. Even later on, some of the substitutions that were made, players were getting tired. And it's just, it's the level. It's the level. This Moroccan team have prone everything but the level is the level and this is why yesterday I said in my preview I have a prediction with my head and I have a prediction with my heart and with my head I called it 1-0 to France and I said that Morocco would tire and my heart was thinking nah the Moroccans are just gonna keep flipping going and they did but in that 18 yard box there was no positioning and they let themselves down. Now, there were a couple of calls from the referee that you could argue in terms of the fouls. In terms, there was a penalty shout as well for Morocco in that first half. And you're thinking, well, the, Mor the referee, the referee left his cards in the dressing room. Can I just say that? One yellow card, I think there, was, there should have been about eight or nine yellow cards given tonight. I don't know why the ref didn't react. Very lenient referee. Very lenient. But overall, you could just see that the level in the end, the French... It's the caliber, the caliber of these players and where they at, where they're at. The block that France had formed. The one thing that we can all learn tonight is, despite the injuries that France had coming into this tournament, despite the rumors of little, you know, mishaps happening in the uh, in the camp, or it's not as harmonious as it was in 2018. The group is the group. Deschamps has been there for a long time and the group is the group. And no matter what, the French will always produce a team. It's not just individuality. It's a team. Even if there's new players coming in, the block is always there and the group are always together. And throughout the tournament, they just keep getting better and better and better. You can say the same for the Argentinians, and hence why they're in the final. Because as the pro as the tournament's progressed, Argentina have looked better and better and better. So rightfully so. Is the final correct? Yeah, you can say it is. But Morocco, they had the talent today to get to the final. They really did have the talent today to get to the final. But did they have the experience? Did they have the legs? Did they have the... The calibre in tactics in order to get players in the right positions at the right times to make the right movements at the right amount, you know, it, it's, it's a question of getting everything right to reach a World Cup final and you need a bit of luck. And France had everything nailed down despite not being the best team on the night. And at the end of the day, that's the most thing that, that's, that's the thing that matters the most is what is the result? It's 2-0 to France. France are in the final. That's it. And they deserve it. Fair play. But Morocco, despite the shortcomings, I would say, um, in, especially in attack, they made themselves proud tonight. And they've made themselves proud throughout this whole tournament. And they've been an absolute joy. And personally, I'm proud of Morocco. I really am. And um, I, it hurts a little bit to not see Morocco in the final because I, I believe that they, they, they can and they should have and they, they had what it took to make the final. But you can you can be proud of Morocco. All of Morocco should be absolutely proud of these lads. And these lads, when they fly back to Morocco, they're going to get the biggest welcome that I think any national team has seen, except for the World Cup winners. We'll see who wins the World Cup. Is it going to be Argentina or is it going to be France? There's been a lot of predictions as to uh, point in, in one direction. And that's Messi, right? And it's his last chance. And I think the... Uh, I said this yesterday. Or did I say this two days ago? It, it seems like it's destined. It just seems like it's destined. It seems like it's just... It's meant to be. And it's heading there. It's going to be Messi picking up his, his first and last World Cup. You know, and Argentina winning it for the first time since Maradona. Uh, there's, there's a story to be written there. But at the same time, the French, can they do it two times in a row? It's been a while since we've seen that. Since when was the last time we had a team win it two times in a row? I'm trying to think back. It's been decades, if I'm not mistaken. It's been probably Brazil. <laughs> I'm thinking like 1970s Brazil. Has anyone won it back to back since then? I don't think they have. Anyway, we'll wait and see. But France, congratulations. Absolutely deserved. Despite playing... They weren't... Well, they, they were defensive in big portions of the games, but they were, they were playing opportunistically. They were playing as opportunists. And they took the opportunities. And they put it in the net. That's it. And that's where the French are the most efficient because they have blockbuster talent up top and blockbuster attributes, including Mbappe. You have to be serious and at the top of your game to stop them. So Morocco, they gave everything. France, congratulations. Morocco, 
commiserations, loads of love. And thank you to Morocco for creating the history that you have for the continent of Africa, for, for all of us. Absolutely magnificent. You are winners tonight as well. Uh, but France march on to the quarter, to, to quarterfinal, to the final. Argentina versus France. There is still the third place game to play. So make sure you keep your eyes out for the preview to that one. Morocco versus Croatia. That is going to be to see who finishes third. So there is still something to play for. Let's see who gets bronze. And then on Sunday, it's the big one. It's going to be Messi versus Mbappe. It's going to be Argentina versus France. It's going to be first time since 86. Or first time in quite a while, back to back. Let's see who gets it. Who's going to be world champions on Sunday? Preview to that one will be dropping on Saturday, as well as the review for the third place. But tomorrow, Thursday, I'll see. I'm gonna probably going to upload, but I'll see what I upload. I might give you guys just a random surprise. Anyway, I will see all of you tomorrow for a brand new one. Hit the subscribe button if you are new. Hit the notification button to be notified once I've uploaded. Smash the like button if you've enjoyed this. And... Again, France, huge congratulations. Um, it's deserved at the end of the day. And Morocco, my love goes out to all of you, honestly. Um, you've done all of us proud. So congratulations to Morocco as well for reaching the semi-final and creating big, big, big African history and, and being an absolute joy for all of us that have watched this tournament. You've been a pleasure. That's it. So Morocco, unlucky and congratulations to you as well. But France, march on. Let's see who wins it on Sunday. I will see all of you tomorrow for a brand new one. Have a good one. Take care. See you tomorrow. And peace.